Good morning, friends. Today is Friday of the second week of Easter, and our entrance antiphon, you have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. My friends, let us begin our celebration as we should begin all things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, as we come to share our hearts, the beautiful gift of your faith, as you join us technologically through the gift of social media, we come together as God's family from different places, from different backgrounds, from different situations. And in that diversity, we are called into unity, that only God's healing word and the gift of his body and blood can do for us. And so as we recognize this unity, let us also recognize the moments of division that we have separated ourselves from God because of our sins. And let us ask the risen Lord for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, on the night before you died, you gave us the gift of your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered and died upon the cross to take away the sins of the world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose on the third day to win for us eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared a claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him. But he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. All day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, one thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? 
One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips so that I may wordly proclaim his holy gospel. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test them, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I think part of the job description of any priest besides celebrating the sacraments and preaching and all of the normal things that is expected of any priest, but one of the job titles also, I think, is organizing events, um, organizing celebrations and socials and all of those things that we never studied in the seminary, uh, that we were never taught how to do. It's kind of on-the-job training. And one of the biggest concerns all the time with these rather large church-sponsored events is how much food do we order? And most of the times we have committees of people who are there to assist us, wonderful, dedicated volunteers. Oftentimes there's a, a variety of opinions, sometimes some lively discussion of how much food to buy. And of course, uh, as we are all worried, but especially in any Italian parish, uh, the biggest mortal sin is to run out of food. Uh, God forbid that we should run out of food at any type of a social. And so we realize uh, that we want to make sure that there is hospitality. We want to make sure uh, that we are uh, making sure everyone is fed. That's the concern in today's gospel. There is this large multitude of people that want to 
hear Jesus, that want to see Jesus, maybe even the possibility of even touching him and being able to receive some type of healing blessing, some type of comfort and strength that they are in need of in their lives. And so Jesus sees the need to feed them as well, not only spiritually, but we also have physical needs as well. Uh, and that's why Jesus wants us to pray to the Father as we pray for our daily bread uh, so that we can have the, the physical, the material sustenance that we need so that we can serve the Lord in our daily lives once that we are, our physical needs are met. And so uh, it's, it's, I like the gospel because it seems that Jesus is messing with the apostles a little bit and says, eh, where, where are we going to get this, all this food for them? Uh, and they're concerned as well too, almost uh, pretty much almost kind of given up and say, well, there's no way that we could do this. So it's probably best that just kind of, you know, let them just all go home and they're all on their own. Uh, but there is this, this boy, right, in the gospel who just has the, the five loaves and the two fish. And uh, the, the little that this boy has, and remember a, a child in, in biblical times uh, was considered almost insignificant. They, they were just kind of out of the way and, and forgotten. Children were not uh, always counted. Children and women oftentimes were, were considered insignificant. Uh, thanks to the Holy Spirit, all of that has changed since then. But in those times it was. So here's a, here's a boy who saves the day simply because the little that he has is given to Jesus. And so that is true for us, that the little we have, the little, the five barley loaves and two fish of our own lives, of our own gifts and talents, when we give it to Jesus, it is then that Jesus works miraculous powers, that Jesus is able to do great things. But Jesus is expecting our cooperation. He's expecting our input on our own, we can do very little. In fact, most of the times we end up really messing things up. But when we give things to Jesus, it is then that the power happens. Not because of what we have, because we are deficient in what we have. But when we give it to Jesus, it is then that it becomes something powerful, supernatural, miraculous. And so Jesus identifies this need and responds to it. It mirrors, at least for me very much, the need at the wedding feast at Cana, where his mother Mary saw a need, where they ran out of wine. They'd run out of bread, they'd run out of food, but they ran out of wine. And Mary, attentive to every detail, goes to her son Jesus and asks that he work his miracle. They have no more wine. And we know that story as well. So it's in those needs that reminds us that even in our own little particular needs that we have, that oftentimes we say, you know, I don't even want to pray for some of those things because I don't want to bother God. He's got, he's got other things to worry about. We got pandemics. We got world starvation. We got worldwide corruption. We have all of these other things that God's got to worry about. And, you know, you think God is worried about this, you know, this little mole that I have on my arm or something like that. Yes. He's worried about every detail, and not only Jesus, but his mother as well. They are worried about every single detail of our life and where we are suffering, where we are hurting, where we are concerned. Jesus wants to sustain us spiritually, physically, emotionally. Jesus and Mary are there for us, and they help us so that we can continue to serve, to serve them by giving them what we have. So even though our faith may falter, even though at times it's weak, uh, we don't, we're not possessing all of these infinite amount of talents and, and gifts and abilities, what little we have, the little loaves and fishes that we have, let us give them to Jesus. And he will use us to work his grace and to work his miracles and to bring comfort and consolation and sustenance into the lives of others. That's how the work of Jesus continues to this day. I loved in the first reading this, this argument from, from Gamil, where he says, if it's, if it's coming from human origins, it'll fall apart. This, to me, is one of the best proofs for the existence of Christianity, for the divine foundation of Christianity. It really, here we are, some 2,000 years later, we're, we're honoring and celebrating and adoring our Lord, some, some guy that just happened to be put to death 
uh, among thousands of others. And, and his message continues until this very day. You know, that millions and millions of people throughout the world follow Jesus just like yourselves. This is just something that was a hoax, something that, uh, a trick that was played on humanity? I don't think so. And, and so that, that argument, that defense that is in today's first reading is very, very powerful. This all comes from God because it's divinely rooted in God and how God works through us, how he has chosen you and me to be those channels of grace, those channels of mercy, that channel of love and comfort that we could bring into the lives of other people. Let us allow God to do that as we identify the needs of others, as we identify the problems and the worries and the pains of others, especially during this time. And let us allow God to use us to bring them comfort, to bring them love, to bring them peace. When we do that, we truly do the work of God, as that little boy never imagined that he would be cooperating with a direct, willful act of God. But what he gave, he gave to the Lord. May we do that this day and always. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, my dear friends, together as the people of God, we bring him all of our prayers and petitions trusting in his perfect love for us. For church leaders, may God embolden them as they shepherd the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God's spirit of peace move them in carrying out their responsibilities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, and we remember in a special way Lucy Singer, very dear friend of the Oblates of St. Joseph family back in Pennsylvania. We pray for Lucy as she is suffering from the COVID virus. We pray for uh, Cameron Carlene, who will have open heart surgery on Monday. We pray for all of the many people who want to be remembered and prayed for, especially the sick, the suffering, and the dying. May Christ, the divine physician, bring them healing and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those gathered today through social media and for all of our family and friends. May God open our hearts to the grace offered through the Holy Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for our beloved dead in a particular way. We remember today Chris uh, Camelli, who uh, passed away uh, a number of years ago. Uh, well, so today celebrating her birthday, but her uh, death anniversary is yesterday. So we remember Chris the Camelli. Uh, remember all of our beloved dead. May they experience the fullness of God's love and mercy in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own special intentions, in a special way, we remember Joanne Ciccatini, who today is her birthday. We pray for Joanne. We pray for all of our loved ones that we may stay safe and well and protected, that God may provide for all of our needs, especially those needs that we now present to him. God of mercy, you have asked us to lift our prayers to you. We ask that upon hearing them, you may respond always in your mercy and love. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine that we come to share in the divinity of Christ, 
who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. and wash away my iniquities, O Lord, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray with me now, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours that we offer together may be acceptable and pleasing to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord, amen. My friends, the Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Together, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together they claim, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus, Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, Qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human family may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and look forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, the Blessed Apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph Morello, our founder, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, my dear friends, let us turn to our Heavenly Father with confidence for all of our needs as we pray for our daily bread using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all worry and fear and distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace and the comfort of the risen Lord be always with you, with your spirit. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold Jesus, our risen Lord, the true bread come down from heaven to take away our sins and to give us life. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me safe to eternal life.
May the blood of Christ bring me safe to eternal life. Communion Antiphon. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. Now, friends, I invite you to offer your own act of spiritual communion, either in these words or your own personal words. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep us safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, the Lord be with you, with your spirit, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God. I wish you a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend, and may we seek to serve and to feed each other through the gift of our love. God bless you all.